Hello Dark, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it is time for another Orc Mode Workout. And a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos every day, please remember to click like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Reach down there and do that. I'm pretty happy with today's work. Uh, nothing spectacular, but everything just kind of flowed the way that I wanted it to. Uh, we did, for this floor press variation, I went up 5 pounds from last time and it was tough. It was tough. I ended up doing 305 plus the chains. And I'm happy with it. Even though it, it felt a little heavy. It looked a little grindy. I guys, I want you guys to notice the way that I lock it out. Notice that I keep the bar towards my feet. It does not drift over my face in spite of the chain weight. Alright, that's a very, very good sign. It means that my triceps are getting stronger. It means my triceps are getting stronger. Now, keeping in mind, people are saying, well, this is a lot less than you bench. Well, yes. And, and my close grip is even bigger than my wide grip. But this is all done pinkies on the rings. So this is a nice, good size bench grip. This is not close grip. When I get this to where I can lock more than my bench max, meaning the chains plus, plus all of it, because this is much harder than the bench, I know that I'm ready for a bench PR. So I'm going to keep working this. And if I stall, uh, I'm going to adjust chain weights. Right, we'll adjust chain weights and ramp back up and kind of do the same thing and micro load up. Probably what I'll do. All right, I don't struggle out of the bottom of my bench, especially my close grip. It explodes off my chest even when I miss a lift. Uh, and we know that I need a lot more chest, whole chest, upper chest, everything else. One reason I'm inclining, and then I need more triceps to be able to lock it. I explode out of the bottom of a bench because of my lats, because of my leverages. Uh, I do have really long arms though, so then I have to have the triceps to follow through and any chest to really get it moving once I pop it off the bottom. So I decided today, like I said, I was going to max on a seated press. I'm um, doing them off pins. People are saying, is this harder or they're easier? Well, some people will argue that, well, because of the angle, this is slightly easier than a standing press, but I lay back on my standing press. So not really there. Uh, the pins, the pins make it harder. For me, the very wide grip makes it harder. I'm out there pinkies on the rings. I'm strong with a closed grip on standing presses. This is obviously weaker than what I can strict press. But again, this will carry over very, very well to my incline. Why does that matter? Because I want my shoulder exercise. I still want it to build the delts. I still want side delts, traps, everything else which I'm getting out of it. Uh, and I feel all of that, even with this seated with this wider grip. But I want to do a variation that's going to carry over to my incline and that's going to take all the stress off my low back. Okay, I'm going to bring my deadlift back up. It's going to be a big priority. I cannot have a fatigued low back going into lower body days. It's fine if I squat first. I need my low back fairly fresh. And that means my lower back is really only going to get trained twice a week. And I mean, I hammer it into the ground. Squats, deadlifts my super heavy reverse hypers. I may even go to where I pulled those good morning and started messing with them again. I may replace them with glute bridges or something. So, I was happy with all of that though. And yes, some people said, oh, that looked grindy. You know, even some, some guy in the comments down below said, hey, shouldn't you reduce the weight so I get to max? What do you mean? Did I lock it or not? Hey, that's a max. And we program our rep work off that. We use the rep work then. The rep work shouldn't look like that and the rep work doesn't. But as I get used to doing that lift, I haven't maxed on that lift in a little bit. I've only maxed on it a few times. I've got to get back in the groove on that lift. And as I do, it'll clean up as I learn the exercise again. But one of the things I'm noticing since I started messing a little bit with it off of pins, I feel like my incline range of motion or, or, or bar path is cleaning up. My incline rep work today looked real good. You guys will see that up next. But we went with, again, a five pound bump on the rep work because we got a five pound bump and... Again, I'm actually working off percentages off straight bar weight and leaving the chains the same. So in theory, this should be harder because I'm not reducing the chain weight percentage to go with the reps. But I got my 3 by 5 Now they were tough, but I felt like they were all good. Uh, even the final set, everything was good. And I will say, I don't normally feel my triceps on the floor pressing. I felt them on the max. I felt chest mostly, which is what we want, but I did feel the triceps. But I had to grind one a little bit. Okay, this rep work, deep chest burn, and then I felt my triceps lighting up 
In fact, my triceps have, have are already sore between this and the JM presses. So again, progress is being made here. Progress is being made. We've got to get stronger and stronger at the floor presses. Floor press and incline. And then tricep work. That's going to be the name of the game. And that incline is so weak that I've got to bring it up. Right? We know that my incline needs work. We know that's holding me back on my flat bench. So that's, again, a high priority. But I'm going to use supplemental work. Those seated pin presses overhead seem to be helping definitely with the incline. And I knew they would. But because the bar path kind of helps me with my bar path a little bit uh, as far as figuring out my strong position to lock in of the path I need to get it through on the incline, I feel like my incline is going to improve. Because I miss inclines if anything goes wrong with the incline, it's been midway or up. It's, it's getting that bar path correct for the incline. And I'm terrible at incline historically. Um, and we decided we're going to take these high 45 degree inclines, which is a nice steep. This is not the 30 degree that a lot of you guys are using. But we hit our rep work from last time based on the last max. But look how much cleaner it all is, especially the second set. Like the first set, you know, is kind of getting in my groove that first rep. But we're pausing everything. We're following through clean. I'm finding a better bar path. And I'm also learning to almost, I'm getting a little bit of leg drive, you guys will notice, especially on the second set, because I've really got in my zone on the next set. Uh, and again, might be some days where I, I end up doing a third set of incline. Might be some days where I do that. But this next set, I got in my zone. Everything exploded. They were clean. I got pauses. I almost, I sank it into my chest a bit. So there's almost a little bit of leg drive happening, like on flat bench. But you know what? It felt good. And a lot of times these kind of aggravate my shoulder, but I'm paying a lot of attention to, to that shoulder health and being very picky with exercise selection, movement patterns. My shoulder did not hurt on these at all. So that's good. There was no real inflammation. But again, pausing, driving, everything's clean. Getting quality reps here. And that's what we need. That's how we're going to build that incline up. And that's going to bring that upper chest up. It does seem to hit the long head of my tricep too. I feel that on a lot of times the incline. Okay. Happy with that. So I think when the next workout gets here, we'll try to do a little small incline PR. Hey, based on that rep work looking nice and clean, I think we have it. All right, I think we have it. And we're just going to microload all this stuff up. I'm going to rotate through these maxes. Uh, we're going to work on very, very small PRs and then program the rep work off of it so that we can keep moving forward. Now, the first rep on these pin presses is always horrific for me. That's why the maxes are hard. Notice they get better as I go. And it's because I'm storing energy. That, that eccentric rep lets me store energy on the way down and then use it to help drive it back up. It's kind of like the deadlift. I'm, I'm always better on rep two and three on a deadlift than I am on the first rep when I'm doing rep work, whether it's a three rep or a five rep, right? So we did just two sets of these today. Uh, my shoulders and everything felt, felt pretty lit up. My whole upper chest is lit up. That's, that's plenty. You know, some people are like, are you getting enough shoulder work? I'm overhead pressing. These are pretty much limit sets, and I'm doing all that upper back rowing. And I want people to understand that when you, it's only bodybuilding world who thinks you need huge amounts of the, the direct shoulder work. I'm not saying I can't do some face pulls and other stuff on a little bit in here. But there are even experts out there. I've known of even some bodybuilding prep guys who actually have pretty big names, if you look around, who actually don't feel direct delt work is even necessary. And I'm not saying that's necessarily true, just pointing out that it's not ubiquitous that everyone thinks that overhead and rows and stuff and even incline can't can't do that it's just a, a point of contention all right and keeping in mind most of the guys who have the big monstrous delts you see a lot of times in the the bodybuilding world it's, it's more of sight enhancement and gear that's giving them that than their training and i'm not saying it, it, it's it's a bad idea if you wanted to do some side delt work just be aware that some of it can be hard on your shoulders be picky and choosy with your lifts. Right now, I find that any of that stuff tends to inflame my shoulders a bit. There's no need to do it. I'm doing lots of rowing, lots of incline, lots of overhead. It's all sufficient volume. I think it'll be fine for now. Uh, JM presses. This first set mm, wasn't as happy. And this angle didn't work. So people are like, why can't you get side angles? This is why I can't get side angles. The next one, I have to I get the best side angle I can get. And I think people will realize real quickly, why can't I do this on some big barbell lifts? Because my rack, this is the best position in my room for my rack for general purposes. And it's bolted. 
to that deck. For me to move that, you need to understand that rack plus the deck it's sitting on is over 500 pounds and I'm sliding around, I'm trying to slide around for people to get a camera angle. It's, that's silly. There's no point in trying to do that. So I ended up getting a little bit better, but you see how close I have to get? This is the furthest I can get the camera away. Now, I, I do have a new camera coming. Um, I decided to upgrade cameras. Might as well, you know, Black Friday sales and everything. But these are a little better. Happy with these. This really hammered my triceps. And I'm noticing when I do these this way and I'm stricter with it, even this when I did 95 the other day, it was hard. Even building it for this 105, this is challenging. So it goes to show that really when I was repping the 185, not a true JM press. And it's not like I didn't feel the triceps, but you know, when I really feel that medial head on these, I felt a bit of the lateral and other stuff on the floor press, that medial head, which we know matters for the benching. I really felt it lit up a lot doing these. And that's kind of the idea. This carries over to the bench press. But I've got to keep bringing those triceps up. So I'm going to push these JM presses hard, but I'm going to have to push them hard and be smart about it. Right? And if I need a little more volume and stuff, I'll just do my, my band press downs, which I'm going to, I started doing this last upper day. I'll just do band press downs the same day of my upper body work and then let my upper body largely rest other than grip training and traps and, you know, all that. There's going to be back work, obviously, my deadlift. My deadlifts are going to work traps and lats and everything. But, uh, I, again, let a lot of it rest. Get two really good quality days in with, with our a volume that we know we need to progress on. Everything's fairly heavy, right? Everything's fairly heavy. Good exercise selection. And keep moving forward. I mean, that's how I built that squat. Oh, I think a lot of people were, were shocked. They're like, you're not doing that much volume. And yet my squat kept going up and I hit that 600 pound squat last week. Okay. It's not about the volume on the individual lift. It's about the, the, the total workload you're doing. All right. And so if you really start adding it up, all the, all the lifts that I am doing, it, it is a fair amount of volume. I'm not doing a whole lot on individual lifts. There's no point. We're just getting the most quality possible. And I'm keeping my volume pretty much within what every top expert in the world recommends, barring a, a little tiny circle of popular people. Keeping in mind, they're the odd men out. These guys who are telling you over 20 sets per week, I want you to understand that they are not supported by the rest of the community, no matter how popular they are in certain circles. They're not supported by the scientific literature. They have one or two studies that disagree with the bulk research. And it's not just not just academics. If you look historically at the volume some of your strongest champions in the world do, they're, they're not doing 25 and 30 sets for a muscle. They're not. Not per week. Okay. Successful people doing that are, are rare. And those people are usually being lazy with their sets. So, uh, again, we're getting plenty in. So that was that's a fair amount of work. Same thing. I do three three sets of two different types of rows. Right. Then I'm deadlifting the next day. That's a lot of back work. Yes, my biceps need a little extra work then, so we're throwing that in. But, you know, this stuff can all be tacked on at the end. Uh, because, again, all the pressing's a higher priority, triceps a higher priority. The back stuff, all of this needs to be here because it, it does carry over to everything. But the back does, all, a lot of it gets worked again on deadlifts. Okay. But also keeping in mind those seated presses work a lot of the, that also, traps and upper back and stuff. So it's, it's even getting a lot of work, even though people are like, well, this just six sets twice a week. Well, that's 12, 12 challenging sets before deadlifts. We deadlift twice a week. Okay. So these went good. I, I just tried these the other day using this bar. I went up 20 pounds. Now the range of motion is not as perfect as I'd like it at the bottom, but if I go the next notch up, guess what? I can't reach the bar. So I slide up as high on the bench as I can to kind of get the best that I can. And that's okay because I get better scapular protraction on, on the inverted rows. I get those all the way to the bottom. This is letting me just, again, do a, a nice strict row, medium grip, hammering my back, hits my lats real hard, hits my rear delts real hard, feel that mid trap. And then up here, same thing, the inverted rows gives me some extra grip training. I do these with a fairly wide grip. Why? Rear delts, traps. I want to make sure I hit that upper back. Now, 
we're still working lats. This works lats. Of course it does. It, I'm just slightly prioritizing that stuff with this wider grip and where I pull it to up to the upper chest. And again, it's a lot of people will notice when I do these and this comes up every time you're not touching the bar. I physically can't. And I can't reduce weight. If I can crank out 15 reps and not touch the bar, does anyone really think if I weigh 10 pounds or 20 pounds less that I touch the bar? Okay. My scapular pinched together at the top. That's where my back stops me. So again, we come back to, as I've said before, why am I so explosive out of the bottom of even a closed grip bench? My lats. The bar has to squeeze that. So the weight when I'm benching literally compresses that because I can't squeeze and do it. I don't have that range of motion because my back is that big. Traps and lats are that big. Especially with my long arms. So the long arms also become an advantage there for compressing in the bottom of the bench. It forces me to push the weight along the range of motion, which is a disadvantage. But man, when my back is that thick, that compression. And that's another reason to keep training the back and keep building those areas. If it does it at this size, what happens if my back gets 5% bigger? Which will also, again, help with deadlifts and other stuff. Think about the bench. One of the reasons muscle mass is the most required for benching, especially upper body muscle. Every every muscle in your upper body seems to impact bench maxes when they check DEXA scans versus maxes. Because even your lats explode you out of the bottom. But again, I'm working hard on chest, working on triceps, because we need those too. If I want to get an elite bench, got to have all of that. I am not genetically built to bench. I'm built to deadlift and squat. I got those long arms. So we need that stuff. Then I did incline curls. Yes, I wore belt for incline curls. Here's what I'm going to say. People want to argue about belts. Belts make you stronger. They improve neuromuscular efficiency. I wear a belt on any exercise that it's comfortable to. Obviously, I can't do reverse hypers in it. It gets in the way on the glute ham race, so I don't wear them on those stuff. So you guys see me doing those beltless? Why wouldn't I wear a belt? They improve neuromuscular efficiency and improves the radiation effect. Use it. And I decided to incline curls today. I'm like, you know what? I've got an incline bench. Let's get a little variation so we don't get overuse in the biceps. I've been doing strict curls and cheat curls. And I've got an incline bench now. Why not? And I've got one pair of dumbbells. I can take them to failure. I can't do that many reps. I think I failed it after about 13 on every single set. You know? Why not? Incline curls get a good stretch on the bicep. It's a, it's a more novel training response. Possibly make your biceps more tear resistant on the deadlift. Hell, and even though I don't care about bodybuilding, how many bodybuilders way back in the day? Guys like Bill Pearl, for example. The guy had massive arms back in the 60s. He used to claim the incline curl was his preferred movement. And I'm not saying it's, it's magical or special, but it's a damn good exercise. It, it's definitely up there with those cheek curls and the strict curl. It's just a different, different movement because it's got that stretch reflex involved. Okay. Might as well. Might as well get that extra stretch. And you know what? Again, that extra stretch can help make my biceps tear resistant. The guys always bring up stuff. What about preacher curls? Well, I would never do a preacher curl. It's a good way to tear a bicep. I can't afford another torn bicep as a power lifter. I wouldn't do it. I'll tell you right now, just as many guys have torn a, a, a bicep on the preacher curl as they have on the deadlift. So, but the incline curl, good exercise. Thought I would do some for a bit just to finish those biceps off after all that rowing. Make sure we get a little bit of bicep growth. Might help with my benching. So, happy with today's workout. So, I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.